goodness, that trailer, huh? How about that? If only there were some people here that could tell us something about that trailer. If only we had some people backstage right now that could tell us a little bit about the trailer we just saw. Like, say, like, two people who back in 2008 were just, like, randomly working on stuff out of Skywalker Ranch, wound up meeting each other, talking, finding out they had a lot in common, and I don't know, sort of creating an entire television world for Star Wars. Maybe we have some people like that. You've seen them on multiple panels throughout the weekend, but now they're here on our stage to talk about all things Star Wars. You know them, you love them. It's John Favreau and Dave Filoni. today, lukewarm crowd. <laughs> oh. Wow, there's a lot more people here than I ever thought <laughs> would be on the other side of that door. That's right, that's right, that's Trapper Wolf on stage right now. What kind of a partner is Trapper Wolf sending Carson off by himself all the time? Come on. Smart. <laughs> I stayed at home. I had a lot of things to do. Deb and Rick and I were talking about stuff. <laughs> Paul can go off and do that. You know, that's, that's his job. Well, we saw, we saw you in the, uh, in the lounge there, in the employee lounge. I gotta know, it looked like, that looked like it was one of your hats, but does that, is that now Disney archival property, that hat? No, it's not <laughs> one of my hats. Actually, uh, Sean, our customer, they made that hat for me special. <laughs> so it's a unique hat that I actually don't have. You are right, they have it somewhere in the costume shop. Does that bug you? It, I, <laughs> you know, I got the jacket, so I can't really complain. We all got to keep our pilot jackets. Oh, wow. That season, that was kind of the deal to get us back. Because we were all like, John, we're really bringing the quality of the show down when we we're there in the background. <laughs> but he really enjoys it, so we got to keep the leather jackets. I stopped just short of putting my dog in it. I wanted to bring Wolfie along and put him in the shot, but I thought it'd be terrible continuity between takes, so we left him out, but yeah. One day. One day we'll get that dog in there. Do you I have, got other wolves. Do you, have any, do you have any Paz stuff at home? No, I have... Um, maybe a, maybe a mug that a little... says number two dad? No, no, the one... <laughs> <laughs> the one I like is the uh, the chainmail but Beskar shirt. Yes, I have I have that, and I have a that where that went. You have that, uh, yeah, yeah. and I have a, a dark dark saber too. I have one of one of them. That's that's impressive, and, and a bunch of pop vinyls too. Those yes. are over there. Yes. They, they have some cool stuff, by the way. They, they got some great yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. So let's talk. I mean, first of all. Mando season three. You did a little watch along party for people who were here last night of the latest episode. It has been so fun to watch the evolution of the show, the explorations of genre. I love that we got a buddy cop episode, you know, a procedural. I love that, you, that you're exploring this space. How has the show kind of changed for y'all? And, and, you know, how do you kind of 
work that experimentation into it? Well, well, the big change is that we went from a very uh, first person ground level adventure with new characters and new planets, slowly working our way into weaving ourselves into the fabric of Star Wars more as we introduce some legacy characters into the second season. And now with Ahsoka coming out in August, we have a lot of, we're in the same time period. So there's a lot of coordination as to what's happening within that time period. And so we try to keep and preserve the, the, you know, the personality of what the show originally was, but every once in a while, the, gal the greater galaxy has to uh, uh, rear its head and affect the way things play out. Yes. And talking about that, there was a, uh, there was a cameo that was particularly special, I think, to a lot of people here and uh, a lot of people that I work with, and that was uh, Jedi Master Keller and Beck. <laughs> Who is, of course, played by the amazing Ahmed Best. Uh, how did the decision to uh, to introduce Kellerin in as as really the the reason we have Grogu? There, there are two two sides to it, really. One is, you know, what Jedi would be appropriate as we go through, as Dave and I always discuss with, as with, as with Luke Skywalker's appearance, who is in play in the galaxy at that moment and what would make the most sense for the story. And we love to pull in elements that's even outside of canon uh, if it's part of what's uh, part of the Star Wars fabric. And the Jedi Temple Challenge, it made perfect sense for that character who looks after the younglings to be uh, w one of the possibilities. But then the other aspect is who are you going to cast? And I remember on this stage in 2019 in Chicago when Ahmed Best came out and got the kind of response that all of you gave him, that's when we also realized that not just the character but the, but the actor, it would make perfect sense for that actor to be the person who got to do that as well. He's wonderful. He's just so wonderful and he's He's such a part of the legacy of Star Wars, and it was just wonderful to see him there. It was a, it was a great moment. It was yeah. a great we're, moment. We're a show that's made by fans and people, everybody who works on the show uh, has to feel the same way about Star Wars as we do, and so whether it's a cameo, whether it's an appearance of a hero that pops in for one episode, or people working on the, you know, behind the camera, there's a, there's a tremendous amount of excitement, enthusiasm, and and, and certainly Ahmed has been with Star Wars and been a fan for, for you know, longer than most, yeah. yeah. Uh, and talking about sort of weaving these characters in, I mean, we gotta talk about Ahsoka. We gotta talk about Ahsoka. Because I'll tell you what, if you wanna talk about two moments that, that I've been on this stage that have gotten the largest reaction, one of them, like you said, was Ahmed in 2019, but one of them was yesterday morning right here when these people saw Ahsoka, Sabine and Hera in live action in the same place. And Dave, these are characters that you and the, you and the team at Lucasfilm have been have been have been working on, have been working with for you know two decades now. It must be wonderful to to, to be bringing this show to the screen. Yeah, man, it's emotional. I gotta say, I'm just taking this all in. Yeah, I, I've been to a lot of these. I've never seen so many people, and I'm just like, I'm just looking. <laughs> Literally, I'm just like, looking, ah. I get emotional, I'm looking at all your faces, and, and all the things you do to make this all possible. And I just, I'm, uh, I'm trying to like commit it to memory, and, and just know that I see you guys and, and the variety of people that we have as Star Wars fans is a part of what makes it so beautiful that you, that you come in costumes or just a t-shirt. I, I, I love how much you put into it. It means so much to me. Um, I don't want to, because I get it. Like, I really get it. John gets it. If I wasn't sitting here, I would, I, I swear to God, and people say it, and I think we all know, but I would be out there. I've been out there. I appreciate the effort you make just to be here with us. And just let me 
me say that. And thank you so much for supporting the work that I've been a part of and, and, and through stars all these years and these characters and to have them in live action. It doesn't happen, uh, you know, without you supporting it for all this time and wanting it. I get to do these great adventures with John and everybody else because of that support. And it's a real privilege. So thank you. I mean, I think, I think that's something. I think that's something that we all feel. I think that's something that we all feel coming off of everything that that you've all been working on for so long. Is uh, we we know how in touch you are, and we know how much it means to you to put forth that effort. And I mean, if, if anything, I feel like Ahsoka, like you're saying, is is such a show that represents that reciprocal relationship. You know, because the love for Ahsoka. From the well, fans. It's a special time because after Revenge of the Sith, I don't think any of us knew what was going to go on. You know, I the first time I saw Revenge of the Sith was in the SAG Theater at Skywalker Ranch because George Lucas asked me to watch it because we were prepared to make the Clone Wars. But for a lot of people, Star Wars was over. But if you were a Star Wars fan, you know that we used to have a pin that went around conventions that Star Wars is forever. And uh, you know, I think that. As a group of fans and people, that's really proven true because people wanted it. No, no one, I think, understood that better than George, which is why he made Clone Wars, which was episodic. He saw the future of things and streaming and how we would be able to watch things in, in all these different manners. And it's just grown and grown and grown. And, you know, John was a part of Clone Wars. And so when, when oh. John came with this story to make Mandalorians, I'm like, that makes sense to me. He is a Mandalorian. He got it in my show. <laughs> and so I was like, it was perfect. And, you know, and then you look at, I, you guys, if you met Leslie Headland, and she's a massive fan that yes. and I've talked to, and I enjoyed talking with her, and her, her, her teaser was phenomenal. I mean, how can you not be excited about Acolyte? It's so and, amazing. And, Tony, Tony Gilroy did a version of The Empire that's like the, it's like the most THX awesome evil thing I've yes. ever seen. Like, and so I love all that and that's inspiring. It, we inspire each other. It's a big collective effort at Lucasfilm and I, th I think it's all building in a great direction. Uh, so it's not just one thing we're doing. I'm glad people like Ahsoka, but there's so much out there. You know, like our friend Dev Chow went and made Obi-Wan. How awesome yes. was that? Yes. You know, there. And I get to watch those shows, which is super cool. So there's yeah. no one dimension of this that's, uh, that's just better than the other. It's just all great, and we love it. And uh, I mean, look at it. This thing has grown. Yeah. I mean, there's a Tauntaun over there. You believe that? Yeah. How, I mean, we just take that for granted now. And it's Tauntaun. But it's like, <laughs> no, it's really cool. There's no, I feel like I'm on set with the video wall back yeah, there. I and know. The set and the, and the, the oh, my I'm gosh. Gonna you, I'm going to let you know. I'm going to let you know that if you push right next to the blast doors, well, we've got this, first of all. Yeah, I'm going to let you a little know too real these that days. if you push that white button when you're on your way out, uh, something's going to happen. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. That's yeah. the last button you touch when That's... you sell it that way. <laughs> Something's going to happen. That's all I'm going to say. All right, uh, you're talking, pushing it. But talking about, uh, you know, like you're saying, that building this sort of uh, now, it's, it's always been a connected galaxy, but now sort of bringing it to television and to Disney Plus, and we're seeing the Acolyte, and uh, something that I've been particularly interested in is Skeleton Crew. Uh, yeah, because it just, it feels to me like those big, magical adventure movies that were such a genre in the 80s. You know, like, I feel like, like a Willow, like an Amblin production, you know, like a Goonies, something like that, where it's like, my entire family, we would, we would watch those movies over and over together, and they had a very particular tone, and I feel that tone from Skeleton Crew. Is they, was that a particular thing that yeah, you wanted I to see in it? Yeah, I think that's exactly what John Watts and Chris Ford uh, had pitched, which was, you know, an Amblin movie that starts off from the perspective of what's it like for ordinary people in the suburbs mm -hmm. in the Star Wars galaxy, and launch them into an adventure. And what I like about it is that, and as George always did, there's a, an, an entryway for younger viewers too, but you have to create a world that still feels like Star Wars and that still feels dangerous and could sit alongside of all the other shows. 
And so it's just wonderful to see things from different perspectives. And Star Wars allows you to do that because the world is so full, so rich, so lived in. You could put the camera anywhere. And if you're, and if you're doing your job, you should be able to look at any, from any angle and feel that same feeling that it's authentically Star Wars. Yeah. Well, it all looks very, very amazing, yeah. Obviously, we cannot wait to see more. Obviously, we will have to wait to see more. <laughs> I remember on the panel yesterday, uh, somebody said, yeah, and you're going to be able to see it soon. And Dave said, not so soon. Yeah. Not so soon. <laughs> right back to work next week. I mean, we got so much editing to do and visual effects, but it's fun. Every day we're looking at that galaxy with a microscope trying to you know, figure every detail out, and it's, it's, it's very fun. The stuff coming in, uh, you know, ILM's doing great work. Uh, we got great wizards making magic happen, so I'm real excited for you guys to see it. I can't wait, can't wait. Well, we are excited to see all of it. Thank you so much, John Favreau and Dave Filoni. We've got more from Star Wars Celebration Live in just a moment, please. <laughs>